getting ever closer and closer to Der Holler days. Yes. This morning, yesterday was St. Nicholas Day. What is that? I don't know. Apparently, you're supposed to leave your shoes outside your bedroom door and St. Nicholas fills them with candy. Why would Saint? Why would he do that? I don't know. I forgot to leave my shoes out, but St. Nicholas was nice enough to leave me a bunch of peppermint patties anyway. That would be... That's an asshole thing to do, though. Because you, you put, like, your slippers down, and you're like, uh, uh, get up, get the mail, and you put your feet in your slippers. You're stepping on your candy! And then this morning, I was woken up by the sound of something sliding under my door. And I was like, oh, how cute. Patrick's, like, sliding a note under my door. But there was no note. And I... Without my context, and I'm completely blind. So I didn't see anything until I stepped on something, and he slid candy under my door at, like, 9 o'clock this morning. And then when I did get up, he goes, you have to look in your stocking. You have to look in your stocking. So I opened my stocking, and there's a present. And I said, oh, should I open it now? And he goes, yeah. And he had painstakingly gift-wrapped a can of Sierra Mist. <laughs> And it was like four layers of gift wrap too. I was like ripping and ripping and ripping. He was, I'm an excellent rapper. And I'm like, you are. <laughs> I think like my, my sister bought him a roll of gift wrap that was his own. And he just started wrapping everything in the house. He was <laughs> like, yeah, I wrapped the phone. And then I had to unwrap it when dad called. <laughs> <laughs> you be careful. Well, you're going to be walking and just one day hear a merfold. <laughs> He wrapped Tiburnian ah. Hippo. He wrapped Tiburnian Hippo earlier. He's gonna wrap the cat. He tried a few times. <laughs> I had to stop him more than once from wrapping Bridget. He wanted to trap her in a box and then wrap the box and leave her under the tree. And I was like, do not gift wrap the cat. I, I think I just say that at least six times today. You guys are doing the Christmas shit early, though. Man, that's... Well, my sister does not fuck around with the decorating. Every room in the house has its own Christmas tree. Except mine, because there's really no room, because I have too much stuff. But yeah, my nephew's room has its own Christmas tree. The basement family room has, like, every room in the house has its own Christmas tree. And they all have a theme. And then there's garlands, and like, she doesn't fuck around. She's no joke. This house is gorgeous. What are you trying to do? Confuse Santa? The fuck do I put these? There's like 10 goddamn Christmas trees in here. The fuck do I put it? And Bridget fucking loves it because every room she goes into, there's a nice warm Christmas tree to sleep under with a blanket under it. So she has to start. She's like, this is great. So she hasn't started knocking them over yet, I take it. No, she climbed the main tree last year, but last year she was this big. Now she's bigger. She doesn't seem interested in climbing them this year, just sleeping under them. Well, we're not quite to our Chris Guanzonicus dismiss nonsense yet, thank God, because I'm only really sure it's going to make me sad. Are you going to be in England for that? I am going to be in England for that again. So we're going to have to deal with all that weirdness, because I like making things difficult on myself. So you're going to be, like, wearing a top hat and eating figgy pudding and begging for tuppence for Christmas, because that's what they do there, right? No, that's not what they do there. That is not what they do. Although You're going to have to like kill your own goose and deal with the ghosts of Christmas present. Although, when when in the winter there, it's fucked up because it's just like, you know, the sun fucks off. It's like two in the afternoon, the sun's like, I'm done. And it's like night until like eight in the morning the next day. The sun just like, fuck you. It doesn't really get as cold there, though, as I, like, Ireland, at least, is a little more temperate than even we are in New York. Like, they don't really get snow. Let us begin the intro, as we are wont to do on the show. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here with something we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And Tara, I have very sad news for you this week. Uh, if you have any, uh, any, tra- did, did, did you ever want to travel? 
like world travel kind of stuff ever? Do I want to? Yeah. Sure. Well, I've only, the only foreign country I've been to is Ireland. I would like to see some other places. Well, unfortunately, you're not allowed in China. I heard. You, you, you are no, you, you can't go to China. I heard that I'm against the law in China. China bans wordplay in an attempt at pun control. This is a real thing. Online discussion. Yet, Thailand still hasn't banned you. From online discussion to advert, Chinese culture is full of puns, but the country's print and broadcast watchdog has ruled there is nothing funny about them. It has banned wordplay on the grounds that it breaches the law on standard spoken and written Chinese, makes promoting cultural heritage harder, and may mislead the public, especially children. The essence of this argument is people are too stupid to understand puns, so we're making them illegal. I mean, on the one hand, that's true. But on the other, that's like one third of my speech. You know? <laughs> I'm not sure I could effectively, com I mean, I couldn't effectively communicate in China because I don't speak Chinese, but I don't know how to communicate without puns. Is like, I mean, fuck, if they outlaw like Big Lebowski references, I'm sunk. How sad. Oh, that's autoplaying. Why is something autoplaying? Stop that. Okay, computer Ronin. So literal word crimes. Literally, they're they're honestly admitting. Look, our population is too stupid to understand puns. So to make it easier for everybody, if you make a pun, it's illegal. What's the punishment? Oh God, Tara! <laughs> I didn't even mean that one. <laughs> It's genetic with you. You're doing it. You don't even realize what. I didn't even realize it. It's... I'm amazing. What's the reprimand? It does. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to find out what exactly the uh, the the. <laughs> We're trying to find words that aren't punishment. The penalty. The penalty. Yeah. What's I, I don't see what the penalty is listed in the uh, in the article here. Oh, I'm getting the rainbow wheel. But it's it's China, so it could be anything from, you know, death to death. You know, it's China. Let's move along. That was not a whole lot on that one, so let's let's move about. Um You think if I was like you think that law applies to tourists? Like, you think if I went on vacation, I'd wind up in a fucking, like, work camp for the rest of my life? <laughs> Making iPods? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Let's go to another place I have visited. Very nice place, which is why this story confuses the fuck out of me. There is a stereotype in the world about Canada, and that is Canadians are supposedly the most polite people in the entire fucking world. So, this kind of... I've, I've been in fast food places where it's been frustrating, they just cannot seem to get shit done. But I kind of keep my composure such as it is. You have composure? I will... May we see this composure sometime? I... I give these people 10 points for creativity, but 20 for... Jesus Christ, what the fuck, dude? Snakes and lattes. Onion disagreement sees Snake tossed over Tim Horton's counter. Two men are facing mischief charges after a sandwich order sent them into a hissy fit at Tim Horton's restaurant in Saskatoon. A hissy fit. Because it was a snake. It, it was a hiss. snake. It's a hissy fit, yeah. Police say... Oh, God. That would be illegal in China. 
Police say the 20-year-olds began arguing with an employee because they wanted their onions diced. The argument got worse. One of the men pulled a snake from his friend's pocket and threw it behind the counter. Oh, so we're not talking about a literal snake here. No! It we're was talking a... about a detachable penis. No. He pulled the snake. No. It wasn't a trouser snake. It was a snake snake. Well, officers... Why don't you keep that in your pocket? That's what I'm saying! I used to have a guy when I worked at the car hop who always came in with his pet snake around his neck. That's, that's, that is some weird-ass escalation there. But I don't feel like your pet snake would be happy living in your pocket. Oh, hey, you ain't gonna dice my onions, eh? Oh, I ain't gonna have that day. So uh, I'm gonna throw a snake at you, all right? Okay, have a nice day. I didn't even know they had snakes in Canada. <laughs> I mean, isn't all of Canada pretty much the North Pole? Yes, they have singing snowmen and abominables and little elves who want to be dentists. Exactly. It just and Derek <laughs> and Derek. That's all of Canada, right? There. That's all. Of Canada. That's all there is in Canada. It <laughs> of all the fucking things, just who throws a snake? Honestly. Well, they did it in The Mummy Returns. Yes. Brandon Fraser caught it and threw it back. But you do realize this is Tim Hortons. Maybe it was Brandon Fraser working the Tim Hortons. What else is he doing? I think he's Canadian. Maybe they just wanted to see him do that cool stunt. Yeah, people in the chat, people in the chat are like, oh, poor snake. Okay, guys, I really don't think that Canada is a giant snow thunder, okay? Like, I, I may make joke. They don't understand joke. Maybe they should be illegal. They, they are the, uh, the, the well actually group. Yeah. It's after every single joke. Well actually! Which, why would you do that? I don't understand. Your why are you watching? Yeah, you're joke killers. You're you're murderers of jokes, and you should. Do you know do what that. we do here? Yeah. Okay. I'm a little sad about this, but not surprised because I I understand not everybody has the broadest of sexual experiences, and oh they, boy, I said, <laughs> just I love what you go there. Oh boy. Well, I like where this is going already. I know not everybody does all sorts of things and experiments and tries new things, but this is really, really kind of sad for everyone involved. And I, I, ah, there's no living this one down. Sex toy found at San Diego Federal Courthouse prompts bomb squad response. Oh, really? Courtyard next to downtown San Diego Federal Courthouse was briefly cordoned off today following the discovery of a device that went quickly went from suspicious to salacious. Well, so, I mean, they have nipple clamps you can hook up to a car battery, so depending on your flavor. Someone, it could look like a bomb. someone spotted the object, an egg-shaped piece of aluminum attached to an electrical cord in the patio. It's it's egg vibrator. Oh, okay. It's an egg vibrator. But aluminum? Federal officers closed off the area. Maybe it was just silver colored. Federal officers closed off the area while a bomb squad investigated. The personnel soon realized the device was a sex toy. All right. If you have called the bomb squad out and everyone is deployed and shit, I want one of two things happened here. Either everyone who arrived on scene already knew this was a sex toy and were just too embarrassed to say anything. Or they really did not know what it was. So you have the bomb squad with the armor and the robot terrified approaching a vibrator. Just also, careful men, it could go off at any moment. We don't know. Most of the time it's an electric razor, but every now and then... <laughs> 
which I, that line always pissed me off because a dildo and a vibrator aren't the same thing. No, dildo and is inert. Think, you, and you'd think that fucking asshole would have done that little bit of research. A dildo is inert. A vibrator has some motion to it. I thought you said dildo is a nerf for a second, and I'm like, no, they don't make nerf dildos. That would kind of defeat the kind of defeat the purpose of that. Please one. don't suggest that to anybody. So I just it yeah, yeah Benjamin J the rejected sequel to Hurt Locker. Who oh anything's a dildo if you're brave enough, and if you really want to be on this show. Didn't you do a whole? A whole episode called that doesn't go there yes and it's true so arietta says sadly they have to take all of the calls seriously you do i and i wonder maybe it was just that or maybe it was just all men what do you think men don't use vibrators all straight men you think straight men don't use vibrators well apparently nobody knew Boy, what the have fuck you've been missing out well, apparently nobody knew what the fuck it was. This was at a courthouse? This is at a courthouse. Who that's a vibrator to a courthouse? That's the next question. I, I mean, it, I know it's boring. I've been to court. Okay? Well, I'm going to be I've sitting here. I've been to traffic here. court. I've been to divorce court. It's boring. Like, I mean. I'm going to be sitting here for three hours waiting to hear about my uh, speeding ticket. So in the meantime, I think I'm... Uh, Gonna you play with my genitals. Bring a book. You bring a book. You don't bring a vibrator. Uh. Hey, you certainly don't bring a fucking aluminum vibrator. They have metal detectors. I'm I'm just I'm amused by this because I just I'm just imagining all these people in like high tech equipment going, what could it possibly be? Like it's some strange alien device. Now I want to just buy cheap vibrators and leave them in public. <laughs> Watch what happens. <laughs> it's a sociology experiment. Like I always joke, I, I I have everybody has that relative that's a little nosy. And I won't say which relative of mine who is, but my old condo, the first time I had this relative over, like she just started opening drawers and cabinets. Who does that? Like. I'll leave you something to look for. And that's what I said. I was like, okay, well, clearly next time we have that relative over, we just need to have like 13 inch dicks <laughs> in every <laughs> door. Butt plugs, this terrifying shit in every nook and cranny of the house for her to find. <laughs> and that should cure that problem. You're a wonderful relative, Tara. So, all right. Apple has this feature on the iPhone. That it, could be your web show. <laughs> Surprise sex toy. Apple has this feature on the iPhones so that if it gets stolen, you can basically shut it off, delete it, shut it down, make everything go away. And it's a nice feature. I don't know why people don't make use of it more. Except in this case, if your thief is less technically competent than you are, then it can come in handy. iPhone thief takes selfies that post to victims' iCloud. Lisa Stockton. Good? Never take selfies with stolen tech. Don't do that. Oh, the boyfriend informs us that there are there's not just Nerf dildos, there's Nerf dildo porn. Of course there is. Police in Stockton, California are sharing the photo of a man they say stole a victim's iPhone. The police. My nephew has a lot of Nerf guns. Are you shooting Nerf darts into someone's vagina? Because that would be really impressive. When you talk about shark shooting. Tara, come back. Come back. Come back. I'm easily distracted. Police have identified the man because he's continued to take selfie photos that show up in the victim's iCloud account. An Apple iCloud account is a data storage service connected to the internet. The owner of the Apple device can set up an iCloud account that backs up the content, such as music, photos, on a remote server. 
Previous reports underline how little the users of these hyper-connected devices really understand what is being shared and with whom. Essentially, you're... That's people steal these things. You're like, no, I got an iPhone and it's mine. Do you yeah, maybe you're gonna want to wipe it? You, you're gonna. Oh you're, hi. Hello, Bridget. Look who joined us. Come on. Hi, yeah, baby. you maybe you want to like get someone else's info off there because when you turn on an iPhone, you set it up. You put in your own Apple Apple account and your email address, and you set all that stuff up and this and the cloud sync and whatnot. If you just take it. You are essentially leaving a trail of evidence. Yes. You're going to want to, like, take the SIM card out at least. There's the other... I mean, it's like... Okay, if you don't understand how something works, maybe you shouldn't be stealing it. <laughs> Hi. I know. I think that's a good rule of thumb for everything. You probably shouldn't be stealing it at all, but if you, if you don't understand how an object functions... Don't pick it up. Because that could go from stupid, in this case, to yeah, really... Yeah, call really... the bomb squad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what that is. Call the bomb squad. Or a strange object that's vibrating. Call, call the, bomb the bomb squad. squad. <laughs> I just... It, I This is basic. Is this not basic stuff? I mean... I know everybody's not the most tech savvy, but this is a, this is a common, you understand, you take a picture on your iPhone and by default, you have a copy on your iCloud. Do most people not know that? Well, I never, I never hooked up the iCloud for that very reason. Because oh. that freaks me right the fuck out. Okay, well then you actually know, see, still, you know what, how it fucking works. Right. So I pointedly did not hook up the iCloud because... I do this show. I wonder if he's like calling people with that person's phone and their name is popping up on the caller ID and shit and they're not answering. He doesn't understand why. Probably. I mean, we've done stories about people that post to the Instagram account of the person whose phone they stole. Yeah. Not understand. That's not yours. You see, it's called a trail of evidence, you little shit. Oh. <sighs> But they, but speaking Damn kids today. Speaking of not stealing something, if you don't know how it works, oh my god! Don't steal vibrators either. Don't steal vibrators. But um, I think it, it keeps getting harder and harder to judge. But I think this man has won the stealing shit in your pants category. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. I think this guy wins. And the best part is, he, he appears to be proud of it, too. If, if you look at his, his, self, his, his selfie, his, his selfie, his I'm mug thinking, shot. Maybe? Oh, no, this isn't the one I was thinking of. Man, I retweeted one where a guy stole, like, multiple things in his pants and rolled off on a bike. <laughs> Well, this one just stole, this guy just stole the one thing, but oh, what he stole. Man arrested at Walmart trying to steal cow tongue in his pants. And of course, it's Florida. Man is under arrest after he tried to steal meat from a Florida Walmart. Jason Puckett is accused of putting more than six pounds of cow tongue down his pants. Officers uh, said Puckett walked up to the cooler in the meat aisle put the two beef tongues down his pants, and then casually <laughs> walked out of the store. All right. How does one walk casually with six pounds of cow tongue in their pants? I mean, it's... I gotta think it's hard to walk casually with any kind of tongue in your pants. I would think that would be distracting. <laughs> yeah, RPG holic. No, I'm not. Ha I'm not stealing. I'm just happy to see. The meat was recovered, valued at just thirty-five thirty-five. Why? Why would you want it back? Here's the thing: like, you go to see candy on a street corner, 
she's going to charge you a lot more than that to put tongue in your pants. That's value. Walmart. Is, yeah, but is her t- does her tongue weigh three pounds? Six. Probably not. And does she have two of them? Because that would be and six if, pounds. But. And if either of those things are true, don't pay her. Don't pay her. Yeah, because because you're going to have a lot of doctor bills. Yeah, if, if someone's tongue is three pounds, th- they should be on house. Yeah, that's that's one of those. I this guy just the gall of it. Just like, you know what? Today I'm going to do. I'm going to put some tongues in my pants. Walk out the store. Ain't nobody going to stop me. I just can't stop laughing at the tongue in the <laughs> because I'm twelve. Because we're twelve, yeah. And pure oil. Tongue in my pants. Got some tongue in my pants. <sighs> Let's. How would you do that? Step one: steal the tongue. Step two: open your pants. Why was stirring it up? We need Justin Timberlake for that sort of thing. Yeah, if. Was he going to eat it? Was he really going to... Or was this just a fetish? We've covered covered this before. Clearly, it was just marinating. It's called a dry rub. I'm sorry. I'd be put to death in China right now. You would. Um... This next one is one that every, literally everyone, everyone sent me this story. I think they said it to you too. Everyone w- lost their. They thought this was the best thing. Well, here's ever. the thing: like people send us links during the week, I don't click them because I kind of like not knowing what's coming. <laughs> so I don't click links that people send us during the week. I leave that to you. And I got criticized for that once. I went on a date. And on this date with a guy I met online, he was like criticizing the show and telling me that like I need to prepare in advance because I'm not funny enough and I need to research all these stories ahead of time. First date, and I'm like, okay, thanks for the tip. Don't date online is what I'm telling you people. I I have had disagreements with my significant other in public before. Everyone has dealt with this. I think this is not the best way to handle said disagreement. Iowa man accused of using sandwich as a weapon. Iowa man was jailed without bond after he allegedly assaulted his pregnant wife with a McDonald's McChicken sandwich. Jail record, so Marvin Tremaine Those Hill. Are floppy. Yes, 21 was booked into the Polk County Jail just after 4 p.m. Report from police said Hill had called police claiming his wife had assaulted him. Now, here's, here's what his definition of assault is Hill's wife had mayonnaise down her shirt and face when they arrived, and that Hill had allegedly thrown the sandwich at her and smashed the bun from the sandwich into her face. Oh, no. Oh, no. You gotta kill him, motherfucker. He does something like that. His definition of assault was his wife woke him up and handed him the sandwich at about 1 p.m. And Hill reported to police he threw the sandwich at his wife, quote, because he doesn't like them. While McDonald's food is, in fact, pretty salty... I don't think that counts as assault. You stretch for that one. Did you pull something? No. My God, you got to limber up before you give one like that. I don't think that counts as assault, sir. I think that counts as you being a giant bag of dicks. The Literally, the police were called for a food fight. Well, I mean, you mashed it in her face. It's, That's rude. It's, I wouldn't have. See, I, I wouldn't have called the police. I would have just fucked him up. Yeah, you're. Well, you mash food in my face. I'm gonna fuck you up. And she's pregnant, man. What is wrong with you? 
What did you? You gotta say what you didn't like, and you would go. You lose your shit. Yeah, here's the thing. Isn't that like the first third of most porn? Because I usually skip the plot part. Woman brings you a sandwich in bed. It is? I don't know. I skip the plot parts. (laughs) But like, a woman brought you a sandwich in bed and you're bitching? Yeah. At 1 p.m. Your ass was in bed at 1 p.m. And instead of, all right. Instead of your girlfriend being like, what the fuck are you doing? It's 1 p.m. Get your ass up. Instead of that, she brings you a sandwich. What the fuck, dude? There are days I'm still in bed at 1 p.m., so I'm not about to judge there. And she didn't. She wouldn't give it a shit. She's just like, have a sandwich. Hey, sweetie, I brought you a sandwich. Motherfucker, I hate chicken! And that's when he would die. Because he would choke to death on that McChicken as I shoved it down his fucking throat. Pregnant. Don't do that. Don't. It's your pregnant girlfriend. It was pregnant wife. Pregnant wife. Don't do that. Because that's not that. You know, you know what's going to happen 20 years from now. It's going to be Thanksgiving dinner. And she's going to be like, you know what your dad did before you were born? If they're and like that's true, because I just was talking to my nephew tonight, and I was like, "Did you know that Grandpa set Grandma's dog's ass on fire when they first got married?" <sighs> and he was like, "Oh yeah, I did know that. It's a legend." The so last one tonight is um, yet again. All right, I I'm conflicted about this because we keep telling people, "Look, the old drugs still work. You don't have to be doing this." Molly and Crystal and all this other shit and bath salts and all this crazy shit that's going to fucking make your head melt. However, some of the old drugs not not really all that not not a good idea either. So I don't People don't know this story. Mike doesn't know the dog story. Yeah, the dog had a tick on his butt. My dad tried to coax it out with gasoline. That didn't work. He forgot he had done that. He lit a match and he set the poor... It was a little dachshund. And he set the poor dog's ass on fire. The dog took off. He had to chase it around the house. This dog was burning ass. And it's a long, fine. thin dog with, with a fire coming out of it. So it's like a dog rocket. The dog was fine. The dog was fine. Happy years. Just... I've told that story a few times. I can't believe Mike, of all people, doesn't know it. It was an accident and the dog was fine. So... The the old drugs, they may still work, but sometimes you probably don't want to take them. God busted in PSL mushroom melee. A man accused of spitting in the face of emergency workers was unable to avoid a trip to jail, despite identifying himself as God. Port St. Lucie, Florida, police encountered, quote, God, whose real name is Martin Neyera. Neyera, did I say that right? Nahara. Nahara. Okay. Um, a man identified as the victim said Nahara, 24, took some mushrooms and wanted to fight him. He said Martin also urinated on the floor and was tearing up the apartment. An officer tried to speak with Nahara, but Nahara spit in his face. The officer told him he'd go to jail if he spit in the officer's face again. He spit in the officer's face again and also punched him several times. When a rescue worker asked him what his name was, Nayara said, God, and expectorated in the rescue worker's face. I believe him, and I'll tell you why. You believe he's God? Yes. Two reasons. I gotta hear this. One, if you were God, and you showed up to check on your creation, and you landed in fucking Florida... <laughs> When you start doing some heavy motherfucking drugs. <laughs> okay, Reverend Mal nails it. Identify yourself, sir. Yahweh. No way. Also, the deep cut to that is not a lot of people know that Port St. Lucie is where the New York Mets do their spring training. And if you've been following the New York Mets for the past couple seasons, also a good reason to do drugs. <laughs> 
So I believe him. Okay. I associate drugs with fun. All right. Healing injuries too, but fun is also part of it. You know, that says a thing or two about you. Well, no, it, you, you don't go and do drugs. You know what I want to do tonight? I want to do something that's going to land my ass in jail. That doesn't sound like fun to me. I want to, you don't say, I want to. Honey, you had to be talked out of stealing the Olympic torch. And that was just beer. I didn't go into that thinking that. I was just also, like. Also, you did declare yourself Jesus at one point. So I don't even know why we're judging this guy. But you know what? I didn't pee on anyone's floor. That you know of. I I think, you know what? I'll have a couple beers. I'll hang out. Well, you know. I suppose people will go like, I might have some pot. Just chill. Even cocaine. Even cocaine. I can kind of get the appeal. But any drug that goes... I don't think anyone's sitting, yeah, what do you have that's going to make me piss the floor, punch a cop, and start spitting in people's faces? Oh, yeah, and make me think I am the Lord. I have just the thing, sir. Where's the appeal in that? Where's the Where's the upside to that? Yeah, I don't see the appeal in cocaine because I don't understand why you would want to snort something up your nose. Like, if I go in the pool and get water up my nose, I'm unhappy for the rest of the day. <laughs> so there's your hang-up right there. Just the whole delivery. It's all the delivery system. I don't want to snort shit. That sounds horrifying. Well, don't worry, Tara. We'll just get you some crack to smoke. All right. <laughs> that shit's a... You're like, okay, cool. I've been to hookah bars. I can smoke stuff. That's not a problem. Snorting? It's... Why would... That's and your you, like, turn. burn away your septum that way. I just, I don't... Where Not is the... are snorting Smarties for some reason. Because they're dumb. Kids are dumb. But I just, I guess the first thing we learned tonight is understand if you're going to take drugs recreationally, there needs to be an upside. Which is what I keep saying about fucking meth. Where's the upside? There's no upside to There's meth. There's no upside to meth. You know, if you have a few beers, you're going to be okay. If you're drinking constantly, you're not going to be okay. But you have a few beers, maybe a couple shots, you're going to generally be okay. You're not going to just suddenly lose your entire sense of self and proclaim yourself to be urine god. I don't know. You claimed you were Jesus. I was Jesus. I didn't piss on anyone's floor. Nor did I spit in anyone's face. I wasn't really doing much of anything. At that point, I was... Sir, I would argue that you spit in everyone's face sober every week on this show. Ah. Uh, I wasn't doing... No I, was so laying, I was laying on a bench at a hotel out back, looking at the stars. And suddenly I decided I was Jesus Christ. And that was about the extent of it, because I couldn't go anywhere because I was too drunk. <laughs> I couldn't get up. I hear Jesus had that problem, too. Which, that should have been my first clue that I was not, in fact, Jesus, because I couldn't get up. Not only can you not walk on water, you can't walk it fucking all. <laughs> not only can you not turn water into wine, you can turn beer into vomit. <laughs> We learned that if your woman is kind enough to bring you a sandwich in bed, the appropriate response is thank you. Not a food fight. No thank you if you don't want to eat that sandwich. We've learned... No, but thank you for the gesture. We've learned apparently it is possible to walk casually with six pounds of tongue in your pants. That man has a career in porn. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know if it was casual so much as, what are you going to do about it, huh? <laughs> I don't give a shit. I have tongue in my pants. Hooray. We've learned don't steal things if you don't understand how they work. Yeah. And also, if you don't know what a thing is, maybe 
ask someone before you call the goddamn bomb squad. I'm telling you, I'm just going to start leaving vibrators everywhere. Don't ask Tara because she will tell you. If, if you ask Tara, she will, in fact, tell you it's a bomb. Call the bomb squad. What is that thing? I don't. It's got like this second piece. It looks like little bunny ears. What is it? That's a bomb. Call the cops. That's an especially dangerous. That's a dangerous movie. one. That's the new kind. That's yeah. The little bunny ears release the toxins. <laughs> We've learned the appropriate response. If you have a dispute with your fast food worker, is ask to speak to the manager. Not throw a snake at them. And finally, just... we've we've learned that Tara is illegal in China. It's so sad. Yes, hi. Well, come on up if you're coming. She like sits here and pretends she's gonna jump, and then it's like, just just get me. Just get me. I can't do it on my own. Hello, there's Kit. Yes, you're so helpless, aren't you? We can't go to China, Bridget. I'll get killed and then you'll be all alone. No, she'll be lunch. <gasps>